Great. Dispel myth understandings. What myths do you hold about finding buyers and sellers? So are there any things that you guys kind of tell yourself, um, you know, that you can't find, you know, you can't find a buyer, you can't find a seller because of this reason or another? Um, is there any sort of limited belief that you have around finding potential clients? I think that when you're new, I think that um, people say, I just don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And if that is the case, then we're glad you're here because I think we're going to talk about that today. Um, this chart is just kind of showing where, you know, buyers came from as far as, and it's got it broken down um, in groups of all buyers, first-time buyers, and repeat buyers. So 47% of all buyers are referral from or is a friend, a neighbor, or a relative. So that means either they hey, are your, your friend, your neighbor, or your relative, or they're you know, being referred to you from your friend, your neighbor, your relative. 57% um, of first-time buyers are from that category. And then 41% of re repeat buyers um, come from a referral or are your friend, neighbor, or relative. Um, they used an agent, used agent previously for a transaction. So only 13% of all buyers um, are using the agent that they used for a transaction previously. 2%, well, that's crazy. I don't know how you, um, uh, I don't know how any percent of first-time buyers use the, the same agent previously for a transaction. Maybe their transaction fell through the first time and they came back out. <laughs> um, and then only 19% are repeat buyers. That's terrible. Those are terrible statistics. Um, you guys want to have a hundred percent of your past buyers come back to you. And we do that by, um, you know, staying top of mind, building those relationships and staying in touch with all of our past clients, which is, which is, you know, easier said than done for sure. But, um, and then 7% across the board inquired about a property they saw online. Um, I'm a little surprised that's percentage is so low um seven I, I don't think that's accurate yeah i can't it can't be there's there's yeah. no way i mean i can think of a couple of buyers we've had just this year that were from somewhere online so that's yep um seven percent of all buyers come from a website nine percent of first-time buyers come from a website and six percent of repeat buyers come from you know seeing an agent on a website that's what the statistic says. Um, I don't think this is right either. Because, uh, so for I some, don't know where they pull those statistics I, from. <laughs> I saw something the other day. I think maybe Emma posted it that like it was like sixty percent of all statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. The, the, okay. I don't know about these statistics. What I do know is that visiting an open house is a great way to pick up buyer. Like it's a great way for buyers to find an agent. Um, if you're hosting an open house, you are, are very likely to pick up some clients that way. Maybe not the first one, maybe not the second one. It might take you a few, you might have to be doing them, you know, consistently before it really turns into something. Um, and, you know, not for nothing, don't ever forget that, that sometimes people aren't ready to buy today. That doesn't mean they're not going to buy ever. Um, we have to play the long game with our business. So, you know, don't, don't get discouraged when you're doing these actions and it doesn't immediately produce, you know, somebody signing on the dotted line. 
um, referrals from another agent uh, for sale or open house signage. Those are the last three. I, I really think these statistics are kind of wild, but um, you know, when you get a, a sign in the yard that your listing's for sale, a lot of people are calling you directly um, about your listing. Um, I, I think that dual agency is kind of sticky. It's not something that I like to do unless it's like a vacant land lot. Um, a lot of people do it. It's not illegal or anything. You can do it. Um, it just, it just kind of puts you in a box where you're not really helping anybody and it's not, all you're doing is pushing paper and that's, that's not how I like to function. Um, but just because they like the house that you have for sale doesn't mean that they'll decide that's the offer they want to make. So maybe you have a conversation with, you know, um, another agent that you trust and say, hey, if they're going to write an offer on my listing, would you represent them for this, this house? But if they, you know, don't win or they choose not to, I want them back. Um, you can even get a referral fee, you know, for, for doing that. So, um, that's kind of my suggestion if you're in that boat. And then building agent to agent relationships is really important. Um, you can get, you can do a lot of business from through referrals. Um, I closed at least, at least one deal last year that's sticking out in my head through referral, but I want to say two and they were, they were good ones. Um, one, I just, I literally virtually showed one house through an offer and it was done deal. It was awesome. So I highly suggest that you, you know, build relationships with agents in other states and other areas, um, because that's a great way to, to get referral business. Um, here's some more statistics on how sellers found their agent. Um, I don't know about all these numbers per se, <laughs> again, and they, they're, um, but referrals from or is a friend, neighbor, relative, um, those are obviously the biggest numbers, regardless whether these are accurate or not, that's definitely going to be, um, you know, your sphere is going to be the biggest chunk of your business if you're working it right, for sure. Um, they used that agent previously for a transaction. Um, personal contact by the agent, a referral from another agent, a website. They visited an open house, like the agent hosting the open house, you know, and said, hey, we were thinking about selling our house. Um, so you picked up a seller like that. That happened for for Brandon at one of our open houses this year, they haven't listed yet because um, they're looking for the right thing before they get that, but that, they'll work with them when they do. Um, for sale or open house signage, so kind of pretty much the same. When you pick up these clients or these potential clients from any of those activities, you're going to want to put them into your plan. Um, mm -hmm. And if they're actively, you know, whatever stage they're in. So let's say that, you know, they're, you met them at open house and they're searching and they don't have an agent and they have a couple other houses they want to see hey. and they ask, sorry. That was an accident. Um, but he's not muted. Okay. <laughs> um, so let, let's say that, you know, they ask if you'll schedule a couple of other appointments. Um, this has happened to me. It was actually, they were an awesome couple. They were, they came from out of town to see a house I had listed. Um, they really liked me at my open house and they wanted to see a lot of things before they went back home. So they went straight to appointment. They were really never in that cultivate phase. Um, we met each other. They loved me. And they had me schedule like eight showings um, and for the, for the following day um, to look at before they, before they went back out of town. Um, and so we were, we kind of went straight into appointment, but maybe, um, you know, maybe one of these other avenues, somebody reaches out to you and they're saying that they're not a hundred percent ready just quite yet. You know, they need six months um, for whatever reason. So, um, they would be cultivate, you know, you've got a, 
build, you got to nurture that, that relationship, make sure you're checking in on them, um, in some fashion and then stay top of mind until they get to the point where they're ready to schedule appointments. I'm sorry if you guys can't hear me. Marissa just texted me and said nobody, that she can't hear me. Um, am, am I like, is everybody having that problem? <laughs> I'm sorry. I can hear you fine. Okay. okay. Sorry. Mine's like up to 94. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what she's saying. And I'm just going to read the screen. <laughs> I do have you turned up. Like I'm at max, but I can still hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll try to be louder. Um, do you, do you, besides Marissa, because she has no idea what we talked about, does anybody have any groundbreaking aha uh, that they uh, picked up from that session? Or do you guys have any questions um, about what we, what we just talked about? Did that like spark any ideas or do you want to dig in a little bit deeper to any of those avenues to find um, potential business or anything like that? This was kind of our, our slide to chat a little bit. So I heard that open houses are really good. That slide said they're not. So how good are they? I, I got most of my business when I started. I Like I told you guys before, I think I knew no one. And I got most of my clients to start from open house. Okay. So how do yep. you, how do you do that then? What is the process? Agents are going to reach out. You want to watch the Facebook page. Like, hey, I have an open house this weekend. Who wants it? I can tell you that, you know, Norm Poland's team, the Belchers, um, they're they're constantly looking for people to host open houses. Um, they would be good ones to kind of talk to. And even if you don't see something that they've posted yet, if you were to go to Norm or Julianne, uh, probably Julianne, she'll remember. <laughs> um, and then, or, you know, Mike um, or Payne and say, hey, the next time you guys have a, a new listing and you need an open house host hosted and you don't have anyone, would you keep me in mind? Because I'd really love the opportunity. Um, I'm sure they'll put your, your information in their phone or something and they'll reach out to you. Um, okay. And then with the new changes, so it would just make sense at that point to have a bunch of paper copies of the buyer's agent agreement. And then when they sign in, writing down all their information, here, sign this too. You don't need that for open house. You don't? No. Okay. Mm -mm. okay. Um, now, if somebody walks into your open house and they say, we don't have an agent, we want to buy this house, will you write an offer for us? Then you would need that paper. Okay. Um, but short of that, no, that's not going to be necessary. And my advice you know, to you as far as if let's say, you know, you are hosting an open house and someone's interested in working with you, but they're not interested in that particular house. Um, I would set up an appointment with them, you know, set that buyer consultation, go over that paperwork with them there and have them sign it and explain, you know, go through the whole part. Do you have some packets, Kyla? Do you have that stuff made up or are you, do you know what I'm referring to? <laughs> so most of what I've had so far has actually come from Zillow. So they call in, I tell them what I do, ask them for some, whatever they're looking for. And then I send them an email with a buyer's agent agreement. And that's worked like okay. 80, 90% of the time. Okay. But um, I mean, they haven't, we haven't closed on anything because everybody's got very unrealistic expectations. Um, But I do actually have like six or seven clients. So. That's awesome. Good for you. I don't know if they're real. <laughs> so oh, yeah, that's, the, that's the difference. Well, um, I can tell you that, you know, and I'm glad you brought this up because I meant to send that email out to everybody with coaching um, Wednesday and Jen and I like the sky opened up on us um, the last few days. So yeah. I'm sorry, but I promise you like now it's in my head again and I'll make sure I get that over to you guys um, as soon as we're done with this today. And you'll see, I'll send you like some links to videos about those packets. I'll share um, a version of, you know, one of my packets that I used to use before, um, you know, we formed our team. And so it'll be like a, a solo agent um, uh, 
example and then we'll we'll put some stuff in there on how you guys can find where to create those and that's the homework that we were kind of talking about to get you guys ready for Tuesday night and then we'll we'll really get into getting these appointments and winning them and you know if you have any awesome ideas and creative things you want to add and, and all that stuff on Tuesday night so um yeah well I'll get that to you this afternoon and then you'll kind of know what I'm what I mean by what I'm talking about with these packets and we'll get some stuff for you to watch over the weekend. And I think you'll be like, okay, cool. I like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, was, and then with open houses, if you're, if I would try, if at all possible to pick um, a brand new listing, you know, something that hasn't been on for months and months, like if it's been sitting for maybe three or four months, you're going to be a little less likely to have that big flood of of uh, people unless they've just done a price drop or something like that um now that's a great time to do an open house too maybe they maybe they had it overpriced at, for the first few weeks and then they um did a reduction that can bring in fresh blood so um those kind of think about that time those times are, are great you're going to get the most people through the door um okay. and with open houses you know i'm there's plenty of people in the office. And if you're hosting one for another agent, they'll have open houses for you to use if you ask. Um, so you're going to want to set those out, you know, advertise for your open house um, and um, get a few little light snack stuff, you know, like maybe some bottled waters. I always advise everybody to think about things that if they don't get eaten, they're either going to save for your next open house or you'll eat them yourself and I would get them, you know, you want them to last. Like I wouldn't go spend a lot of money on something in case um, you don't have a big turnout or the people that show up don't, don't eat it. You don't want to waste anything. So think about it from that mindset. Like um, you can always use more bottled waters. Um, you can always like save those little small bags of chips and stuff and bring them to your next open house. Um, we have a tote of open house gear, you know, for our, for our team in our office. I probably should check it out and make sure it's full, but, um, it's a good idea to bring like Lysol wipes in case there's, you know, a mess you need to pick up. Um, throwing cookies in the oven is always a good idea. If you, if you're able to do that, um, you're going to want a sign in sheet and, um, we can give you an example of something like that too. If, if you need help with a sign-in sheet and um, anything else, Jen, I feel like I'm not thinking of everything that. No, I think you're doing good. Okay. <laughs> I'm jumping in when I, when I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. And if you get, if like, let's say that you get off here and you're all pumped up about doing an open house and you get one scheduled, if you want some help, reach out to me or Jen um, and we'll, we'll help you get, yourself prepared to do that for the weekend any cool not just this weekend any weekend if this weekend is going to be a monsoon like it has been i'm not sure if it's the best weekend. it's supposed to be nice out but it's um one of the other agents at the office has a uh um a vendor fair i think going on mm. and i'm participating in it i it's guess i don't have a table or anything so i'm just gonna sit there at the like the trunk of my car but that kyla you might want to reach out to him Okay. I saw something on social media that they've moved that to like the 24th. I saw that if it was going to rain, they were going to move it. But it, from my forecast, it looks like it's actually supposed to be like the only nice day over the next like week and a half. Mm. Well, hopefully, hopefully they'll still have it then. Maybe yeah. that's. Yeah. Well, just future reference. Don't, don't feel like you have to go in blind. Jen and I are happy to, you know, help you. Okay. And now we're going to talk about classifying by what re able, ready, and willing. Focus becomes increasingly possible in direction proportion to how clear you are about what you want, when you want it, and what you must do to get it. Gary Keller from the MREA. Um, well, that quote reminds me of you, Kyla. You've got a goal. You're really clear about what it is that you want to do, and and you're gonna do what it takes to get there. So and you know when you want it to happen. So I feel like that really speaks to you. Hey, yeah. Christian. Mm -hmm. Just one thing, and Kyla, I'm sure you know, but I come from a much different world. 
don't ever let anybody, when you're doing an open house, don't ever let anybody get behind you. You let them go first. You let them go up the stairs, down the stairs. You get behind them. If okay. you don't feel comfortable, you call me. I will go with you to the open house. You can have <laughs> all your leads, but I'll I'll go with you and I'll do my own social media stuff. But Aww. don't don't ever feel like you, if you feel uncomfortable, just call somebody. Okay. Yeah, if, if at all possible, don't do one alone. Um, right. You know, Jen and I don't like our, our agents to do them alone if they don't have to. You know, we, um, I mean, Marissa's a little ninja and, and Brian, or Brian, Brandon, I can't talk this morning. I'm sorry. Brandon is, you know, an officer and, and military and everything, but still you, people are, you always want to be careful. Uh, thanks for, for bringing that up, Marissa. That's definitely, um, a time when you want to be thinking about your safety um and in our line of work that's something that you always want to be thinking about and I know that that um isn't really something that we want to think or want to talk about we hope that nothing like that would ever happen and um you know you don't want to be negative but it's just a it's kind of a fact of of life and and um our job can be very dangerous and thank you for for saying that marissa um and it's okay like i bring my husband a lot mm -hmm. if you want to bring your spouse that's fine mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be another agent they just can't um you know show the house or give any real estate advice or anything like that mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Um, but the, yeah, I mean, I've drugged Trevor and uh, girl, there have been times where I just had him on speakerphone, like you know, in my purse and stuff. So you, you just have to try to be as careful as you can. Um, and, you know, like Jen said, if you can't buddy up with another agent, um, then, you know, you can really bring anybody if your, your husband, boyfriend, best friend, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it don't, it your mom, happen. your dad, yep. anybody. <laughs> yeah, your friends and family, you know, they care about you. They want you to be safe. They'll be happy to hang out with you for a couple hours. Um, and then, you know, if you can buddy up with another agent, there's, there's so many ways you guys could kind of partner and cover more ground and try and get the most out of that and just agree to share it or whatever, you know, agreement you want to come to between the two of you. Um, if you can find somebody that, you know, you trust and, and you want to, kind of have a little buddy system with what did we say the other day uh if you're stretched then find a friend <laughs> <laughs> so yeah being safe is so important I'm glad you brought that up Marissa thank you um able ready and willing so these are the three things that category that, that these are the three categories that kind of qualify someone as being a a good lead right being a great potential client um they have to be ready to go they have to be willing to work with you and they have to be um able so sometimes you're gonna have people that you know they oh my gosh i gotta get out of my mom's house i can't take it anymore um I'm ready to move out like tomorrow and they want to work with you. They think you're great. They like, you know, you trust you, um, but they're not able to, you know, they have no credit whatsoever. Never, never, you know, had a credit card in their life. Um, so they're really not, not a client because they're not capable of, of actually um, working with you, even though they're ready and they're willing to. Um, you know, sometimes you'll run across people who are able to purchase, um, they're ready, uh, but they're not really willing to. Like they, okay, well, you know, we could sell our house tomorrow. You know, we could, we could go on the market anytime, um, but we're not in a rush. We, uh, we don't have to go anywhere and it's going to take the perfect thing. And maybe, you know, maybe they're uh, the price point they want to sell their, maybe they want their house to get sold for a million dollars and it's not ever going to happen. Um, they're not, you know, they're not really willing to be realistic. Um, so it takes all three in, in some capacity. And just because they don't have all three today, doesn't mean that they won't someday. 
um, but you're just gonna it's gonna be important to learn who to focus the a, a lot of time on in that moment and at this point today um, tomorrow like right now um, and who not to not ever talk to again not like you know mistreat anybody or, or totally disregard them but like there there's just going to be times where certain people are they you want to pour all your heart and soul and attention into and it's worth working your tail off and certain certain folks who just aren't quite able ready and willing and they're going to waste a lot of your time you're going to be spending spinning your wheels and um you know you'll get discouraged real fast um so so just you're going to come from curiosity which means you know you're going to need to learn to ask all the right questions um to find out if they're able willing and ready okay um and and there's nothing wrong with that you know and sometimes you'll ask things like um sometimes when you start to ask questions to people they might get a little guarded you know they might initially feel a little like almost defensive um and and then i always just explain like hey this isn't coming from a, a place of pressure um you know i think probably the one most often is can you help me find something to rent um and you I always ask, can sure I can try. I don't I don't personally have any rentals, but I know a lot of folks that do and I'm happy to help you. But can I ask, why is it that you're interested in finding a rental and you're not wanting to, you know, buy a home that you that you own? Is there a reason that you prefer renting over home ownership? And sometimes they get a little it's just like, Well, oh great, you just want to sell me something and they, they get kind of stiff and have to say um, you know, sometimes they, sometimes they're like, well, I just can't, um, I don't think I can. My credit score is an 800. Well, did you know that you don't have to have an 800 credit score? We have a lender that can work with a credit score as low as, you know, 580. Um, you're not going to get the best interest rate, but you know, whatever. So sometimes the, sometimes you ask these questions and they, they find out that, um, they just had the wrong idea about things and they're very excited. Sometimes it's, you know, they have a more personal reason and you just say something like this. I'm not trying to pressure you. I'm just trying to, to understand, you know, where you're coming from and see the best way for me to help you. And if, if helping you find a rental is the best way for you and your situation right now, um, <coughs> I'm not writing you off. Um, but a lot of times, you know, when we get to sit down and talk with people, they're, we find that they just um, didn't think that home ownership was something that they could achieve, and they're very excited to find out more information from us. So um, you, you just have to sort of explain where you're coming from if people get a little fussy about the questions you're asking. Um, you know, I'm not trying to pry. Um, I just I just need to, to kind of dig into the responses you're giving me so that I can best serve issue. Um, if I don't really understand what you want, then I have a hard time, you know, um, performing at my highest and best ability. And then I don't look, you don't, you're not going to see me in the best light. So these are just questions that I'm asking you um, to get to know you best and get to know what you want best so that when I'm sending you listings or when I'm, you know, working with you, um, I'm bringing you things that you're happy about and you don't start to get the idea that I'm, I don't, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm doing or I'm not the right person. And so, you know, the, the, my questions are not ever pointed. They're just for information purposes. Um, So you're going to classify your opportunities for a A buyer and seller, a B buyer and seller, or a C buyer and seller. Um, a buyers or sellers are able, ready, and willing to do business in 0 to 14 days. B buyers or sellers are able, ready, and willing to do business in 15 to 60 days. And C buyers and sellers are able, ready, and willing to do business in 61 plus days. So... Um, you're, you know, you're gonna, well, oh, great. You're, you're in the market to buy a house. When do you guys think 
that um, you want to move. Well, our lease ends in two months, so we really need to get started. They're an A buyer. Um, and then let's say that it's, well, um, we'd have to break our lease if we left, you know, any earlier than 60 days. So, or, or let's say maybe more like they have 90 days because it's going to take 30 days to close on something. So they need to really kind of wait um, before they start shopping because they can't really make an offer until their timeline works out because um, they don't want to have to pay, you know, rent and then a mortgage payment. Um, oh, and just a little tidbit to keep in your back pocket if you don't know this, when someone closes on a house, they don't have to make a mortgage payment that very first month. Most people don't realize that. There are so many people who it's not even their first house. Um, this is their their second or, or third home, but it's been so long since they bought one, but since they bought a house, you know, they've been in that house five, six, ten years. You totally forget, you know, when you made your very first mortgage payment years and years ago. Um, so if, you know, if you have a closing tomorrow, um, they're not going to make a mortgage payment on they're not going to make a mortgage payment, you know, September. They're going to make a mortgage payment October 1st. And you can talk with the lender, like um, when you get a, a buyer pre-qualified and you're working with a lender, um, you can kind of discuss and have a lot of questions with, with that lender. Um, your vendors should be very willing um, to explain and educate you. Um, they should be happy to answer all your questions and, and help you to best explain things to your client. Um, you know, you're, you're bringing them business and they should be really happy to work with you. And, and they're never going to be bothered by you saying, Hey, um, I don't really understand exactly all the guidelines of an FHA loan. And I, I see that you qualified my client for an FHA loan and I'm pretty new at this. Um, so I want to make sure that I have all the right information and I'm helping them to the best of my ability. When you have some time, you know, today or tomorrow, could we, would you just chat with me for a few minutes and give me the rundown? Um, that's, I, when I first started, um, I worked with, uh, I met Jonathan Sweat was the first lender I ever worked with. Um, and I, that's what I did. I told, I mean, he knew I was new. He met me before I was ever even licensed. I was, you know, sitting in on classes before my license came in. So, um, I just was honest and said, I want to, I want to educate myself. I want to be good at this and you clearly know what you're doing. So would you give me a few minutes of your time and, and help me to understand all this stuff? Um, and he was super happy to, to do that. And I don't know many lenders that, that aren't. And if they aren't, then maybe you should think about interviewing a different one. <laughs> um, so uh, C buyers are 61 plus days. Maybe they have something on their credit um, that they need to pay off. And it needs to come off their credit before their score is good enough to get in the, to, to get pre-qualified. Um, I will say that sometimes people get hung up on being A, B, or C, and um, you might want to when you're creating your buyer packets, if you're going to kind of go through this, um, like when when we do consultations, initial consultations, um, and we, at, you know, you're going to ask about what's your timeline, what, what, when is your ideal time for you to start shopping or when is the when are you going to be ready to go on the market you know what does your timeline look like what's the perfect storm for everything to work out in your eyes and they're going to tell you and and so then you're going to respond with okay well then you know it sounds like you're ready to go like tomorrow we're going to start looking at some houses I'm going to get on the MLS as soon as we hang up and see if I can find anything you'll like um so you know you're a an a buyer or whatever, um, whatever their response is. Sometimes people think because, you know, A is, is the best, right? They get hung up on that, meaning that you're they're If they're not in the A category, they're not getting your most attention and they're not, um, you know, A plus clients. So you can, you can kind of 
change that around if you want to. If you want them to be one, two, three buyers, or you want them to be, um, what I, you can leave it the same if you want to. Just if somebody you know doesn't like that terminology, make sure you explain to them that A isn't really the best. A is actually the most stressful situation you can be in. And it doesn't mean that you're not going to give a B buyer, you know, attention and you're not going to, you know, give a C buyer or seller attention and you're not going to work just as hard for those two categories. It's just that A buyers and sellers are like under the gun, high stress, like they're in a, they're in a position where they're, they're not even able to take a minute to, to wait things out and get exactly what they want. They're pressed um, for time. They're in a not great situation and they're being forced into something, um, you know, with, with really very limited options. Um, so it's really not the best category to be in. It's, it's the quickest paycheck category we're going to get, which is, you know, but it's, it's hard on them. It's, it's not really where you want to be. You know, you want to have a couple months before, you're, you're like, ah, if we don't have something on our contract this weekend, I'm going to be homeless. Like that's not the situation you really want to be in as a buyer or seller. Um, so that's, you know, you can kind of explain like, this isn't, this doesn't, this isn't rating you on a scale of, of A being the best and C being average. Like, <laughs> um, we got another aha screen. Did you guys have questions or comments or um, want clarification around anything that, that we just went over? Did I make any sense at all? Everyone's so quiet. <sighs> okay. Um, why qualify? Um, I just need this stitch. Um, when, when? So, document. I don't oh okay sorry I, my brain was going why get pre-qualified and then I read the bullet points and I'm like this doesn't mean that um <laughs> why qualify a client like on your end um now I understand I'm sorry uh it took me a second um so you're going to, you know, you're going to want to qualify clients because if you don't take the time to qualify them and um, ensure that they're really ready, willing, and able, um, you're, you're going to waste a lot of time and energy. Like you can find yourself spinning your wheels with someone who is never going to close right now. Um and the t amount of time and stress and energy you put into trying to make something happen that, that just isn't going to right now, you could have closed two or three deals um, with people who are ready to play ball. Um, so why, number one, um, it's a win-win for everybody, right? Like if they're ready, willing, and able, then they're they're not going to get frustrated. They've got their stuff together and they're excited and they're ready to rock and roll. And, you know, they're ready to work with you and listen to you. And they're going to, you know, they're going to be, they're going to feel like that's a win for them. And if that's their attitude and they have everything in line, then it's a win for you. So both parties feel, you know, supported and excited and you can educate them and they're really going to take it to heart. And it's a much better, much better um, scenario. Um, doc, you're going to need to document everything, right? So they're going to need to sign that exclusive uh, exclusive right to represent buyer agreement. You're going to have to have the proper um, 
documentation um, to work with them. Uh, follow a checklist. So that's gonna you're gonna be able to give them a like a flow chart of this is how a transaction should go. And if they're ready, willing, and able, then that flow chart is gonna be spot on. If they're um, you know saying to you, um, I really want to go look at this house, but you sent them to a lender and the lender said they have no closing cost money, they have no down payment, and until they do, they really can't get a prequal letter. Well, they're going to get frustrated with you because you're not showing them homes or you're going to be showing them homes for no reason because they can't write an offer. Um, and that, that checklist is not going to make sense to anybody and everybody's going to get frustrated because it's supposed to, everything's supposed to go a certain way. A transaction is supposed to have a flow to it. And if, um, if we don't do a good job of, of qualifying that client, then our flow is going to get all messed up. And um, sometimes you might not know why. So it's really important to to make that first step and qualify them, like to make them have that first initial appointment, to sit down and go through that packet and to ask all the right questions. And when they respond, ask some more questions and really get down to, um, really, really get down to why they want the things they want. Why they, you know, <clears throat> why do they want to sell their house? Um, why, you know, why do they want to buy a house? Why do they want to move? Um, because, you know, why is it that they want property? Why all the things? If we, if you don't know why they're saying the things that you're doing, and we make assumptions off of just bare minimum, you know, the first response they get, then you're going to be doing a lot of work based off of what you think they meant. And then more often than not, it is not, you know, at all what their motive really is. We've just assumed it. And then again, everybody's going to be frustrated with each other. Um, so you're going to, you know, you, you want to be able to follow that little checklist, um, you know, have your consultation, have them get pre-qualified, um, start your house shopping, you know, get, get under contract, all, all those things need to, to flow. Um, and then abide by fair housing regulations. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what, what to say about that, you know, it, uh, Treat like, everyone the same. Fairly, yeah. Like, I'm not sure what, Treat what, everyone the same. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't, or like, <laughs> I don't know what, but yeah, always, always treat everybody the same. I don't know if they're saying that you want to tell people that you're going to treat them the same, or I'm not sure what they mean by that. But I feel yeah. like it's probably aimed at saying like don't assume somebody has money or assume somebody doesn't have money based on their circumstances. Yes. Or what correct. you know. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, no, you always want to follow the same process with, with every single lead all the time, all the time. And maybe I'm, I'm just so obsessed with doing that. That doesn't really cross my mind too. I don't know. <laughs> do that okay um all right so you uh qualifying buyers using a buyer lead sheet can be really helpful um you know these are just uh forms to fill out to um get all the basic answers that you need uh They, I'm sure they have some stuff like this in command. Um, Canva has some pre-filled stuff that's really like this. Um, if they're coming from an open house, your sign-in sheet should have quite a few of these questions. You know, like, are you working with an agent? Um, where are you in the, are you just browsing? Are you actively shopping? You know, all those kind of questions. And then a lot of these um, 
are going to be answered in your in that initial consultation. You know, you're going to ask all these questions and take note to all of their answers. Um, so that's what. Ah. Okay. Um, this has given us 15 minutes to role play. Uh, all right. Um, I feel like role play is really hard when we're virtual like it makes it more difficult um jen do you want to just kind of do you just want to like practice through a conversation with me like as if um do you want to be the agent and i'll be the person calling you or, <laughs> or vice versa i'm gonna be honest i suck at this but we can try do you just want to be the person and i'll be the agent okay <laughs> let's uh, okay what are we doing um so just just like I think it, it might be good to just do like a little example of you're calling you know because um you got my information from somewhere whatever and we'll we'll role play out a pretend conversation of um you're calling me to buy or sell or and your house or whatever scenario you want to make up as we go along <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'll just kind of question you like I would as if it was for real. Okay, I'll try. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I suck at this. Yeah. Well, if you want me to do it, Jen, I'm, I can play the um, whatever and Christian can be the agent. Uh, you do it, Marissa. You're probably better than me. <laughs> okay, I, do it. Uh, <laughs> you listen to your mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Okay. You got a ring, ring. <laughs> so you're calling me? No, you're gonna call me, and I'm gonna. You're gonna pretend that you are calling me to either buy or sell your house or whatever scenario you want to come up with, and we'll just like do a mock phone call as if you're legitimately my phone's ringing right now. Okay. Cool. Ready? Mm -hmm. Ring, ring. Hello, this is Christian at F. Keller Williams Realty Roanoke. How can I help you? Hi there. My name is Marissa Holloway, and I am looking to put my house on the market. And I was wondering what services do you offer? Wow, Marissa. Um, well, thank you for calling. Can I ask how it is that you came to find me? I just love to, to you know, um, keep track of that and thank, thank the person if you came from a referral. Oh, I actually attended one of your events in Vinton. Awesome. Oh, great. I'm so glad to hear that. We put a lot of work into those as a team, and it, it's great to hear that that's paying off. Um, so I'm sure since you came from, uh, since you're calling from meeting us at an event, that you've probably met all or most of our team, and you're aware that, um, you know, there are several of us that would be working for you. Um, and we are a one-stop shop, girl. We do it all. Um, we can help you with any and all of your real estate needs. And the reason that um, we have, you know, we are a team of five. It's myself and my business partner, Jen. Um, we have two other amazing agents that work with us. And then we've got um, our incredible admin, Avery. Um, and we all really work together to make sure that our clients always have someone that they can reach, whether it's me or whether it's um, Jen or Brandon, or if it's just a, a forms question or something, you know, you're just needing a yes or no answer. Generally, Avery can make those calls too. So you're never going to be left in the dark or be waiting for a long time to hear back from somebody. That sounds amazing because I work very odd hours and I volunteer a lot. So my hours are a bit sporadic. Mm, okay. Well, um, then I'm going to go ahead and ask you since you have such a wild schedule and we're very flexible. Um, when would be a great day and time for us to come to the house? Because it's really, um, it's really almost impossible for us to give you a, an exact idea of what we could put your house on the market for without seeing it in person. Oh, sure. I'm off every Tuesday and Thursday and you can come at any time. Okay. All right. Well, do you mind giving me the, um, the address so we can do a little bit of homework before we get there? 
Um, and then that'll also help me map out when we've got an exact time and I can go ahead and get a firm appointment with you. Sure, it's 321 Main Street. Hmm. Okay, awesome. Well, it looks like we've got a good chunk of time around noon on Tuesday. Would it be okay if um, if I pop by Tuesday at 12 o'clock and, you know, we can look at the house and see what we can do to help you? Absolutely. And I have pets. Would you like me to put them away? Oh, we love dogs. If they're not going to bite, we don't mind hanging out with them. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Marissa, thank you so much for calling. And we're looking so forward to seeing you Tuesday. You give me a call back if you need anything else between now and then. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. And then, oh, you know what? I didn't get her email address like I should have. So, um, oh, you fired. <laughs> Oh, what I should have done was asked her if she had a good email so that I could send her an invite. And then immediately when we hang up, I send a Google invite to everybody um, so that that's on their calendar and they can't forget it. And it, it kind of, you know, it's a lot harder for someone to cancel an appointment with you than it is to just avoid you. So if you can nail them down and get something firm on their calendar, they're going to be looking at it and they're going to be going, ah, I really you know, I, I'm, I'm like this, I'll be like, yeah, I want to go to that parade in two weeks. And then the Saturday comes and I really don't want to go in public. Um, so, you know, if nobody's counting on me or, or anything, it's kind of easy to be wishy-washy. If they have that appointment on their calendar, they've been staring at, it, they're going to feel a lot worse about, you know, calling to cancel or move it with you. And it, it just sort of makes it easier to get in the door. Um, well, I appreciate we, you doing that, Christian. That helps me a lot. I like to hear the verbiage and then I can just own it myself. Yeah. Um, and then not for nothing, if we picked you up from an event, then we're already going to have all your information. Um, most likely if you registered for our giveaway or, you know, whatever, um, you would be in our command and, and we've already got all that probably. So, um, but y'all forgive me. I've had like half a cup of coffee. I'm not firing on all cylinders. Um, so there we go. Um, and then do you want to do like, do you want to do a buyer? It's pretty similar, but um, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Go ahead. Ring, ring. Anytime you're ready. Ring, <laughs> ring. Ring, ring. <laughs> Hello, this is Christian. How can I help you? Hi, Christian. Um, this is Marissa Holloway, and I was given your card by my physical therapist. She was a past client, and I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for a house. Wonderful, Marissa. Can I ask what your physical therapist's name is? Yes, it's going to be Erin Flurry. Wonderful. We love Erin. I remember working with her and I, I just want to make sure I thank her personally for having her, you call me. That's so sweet. Um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, Marissa? What um what exactly is uh is causing you to call me today? Well, I am uh, retired from Duke University Hospital and my husband got transferred here from the railroad. So we're not in any big rush, but we are on a time frame of about three to four months. Um, we wanted to go ahead and get in before the holiday season. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. And being that, um, you know, it takes a good 30 days to close on a home, um, it would be smart to go ahead and start um, start your search and for us to get to know you better. So um, I don't know that I was a part of the team when I helped Erin, so she may not know this, but... Um, I, I have, uh, I've got a whole team with me now and, um, we, you know, work together. So you'll have an entire team of agents. There are four of us and we have an admin. So, um, you know, whatever service Aaron was in, impressed with by me, it's, it's kind of quadrupled now. So we're going to take great care of you. I think you and your husband will be really happy. That's fantastic because he travels quite a bit. So you'll be dealing directly with me. Okay. All right. And do you guys have a lender that you um, want to work with or are you already pre-qualified? Where are you with that process? 
Uh, we have not gotten one. I'm from North Carolina, um, so I don't know any local lenders, and I prefer to work locally and not with a big, huge corporation. Mm, I think that's definitely smart, and that will certainly, when the time does come for you to make an offer, it will make your offer much more appealing. So that's a great route to go. I've got some awesome suggestions, but um, uh, we can discuss that during our uh, initial consultation is what we like to call it. So um, I'd really love to get something scheduled with you and we can meet in person or we can actually do it over Google Meet if that's more convenient for you. It can be a virtual appointment. Um, and I've got this great packet that I'll email over to you. Um, you can kind of look through it beforehand. If you don't get time, that's okay. We're gonna talk about everything that's in there at the appointment. It'll be about an hour long. Um, and I can, you know, I can suggest some lenders for you guys to reach out to during that appointment as well. Um, and I will say that, uh, since you've mentioned that you have a husband, um, I assume he's going to be a decision maker in this move. So if we could set an appointment where the two of you could be there, that would be best so that I can make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. So we would have to do, I would like for us to meet in person and then we could uh, clue him in on the phone. Um, I can put him on speaker. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, let me look at my calendar. All right. It looks like I could do five o'clock tomorrow or 12 o'clock on Saturday, which would be best for you and your husband. Well, let's do, Saturday. let's do 12 o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> All right. Sorry. A kid came in. I got distracted. Um, okay. Um, all right. Well, Marissa, that sounds wonderful. I look forward to seeing you and um, I will more than likely have either my, my business partner, Jen, or a team member with me Saturday. So you'll get to meet some of us and then, you know, we'll go over our whole dynamic and all the ins and outs of this process you guys are about to go through. That sounds fantastic. We look forward to it. Oh, so do I. Thanks so much for calling. Thank you. And then... Um, you know, same deal. We're meeting in person if we're somewhere, but you get the gist of it. Obviously, I should have set a meeting location and all that, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> mm. This role play stuff makes me kind of nervous, so I don't know why. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I, I just am not good at it and I forget to say things, but I know what, I know what to do in real life. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry um I don't know it, may, it makes me nervous to, to uh I don't know it, it always makes me nervous to do the role play thing with you guys but I just I try my best don't don't let them leave without their email and if you set an in-person appointment make sure you set a location <laughs> <laughs> but you know what in real life when things like this happen and it's unexpected and you pick up the phone, you might be walking through Kroger and your kids might be like grabbing stuff off the shelves and throwing it in the cart. And you're like, oh my gosh, I want to beat y'all, but I have to stay professional on the phone call. Or, um, <laughs> you know, you might be like, and you're probably going to be in the middle of something else. You might be, um, it might make you nervous. Maybe that's the first time that this has happened and you are real life nervous. Um, I am not going to sit here and tell you that there's never been a real life phone call where an actual client has called me and I've forgotten to say or ask something important. Um, it's happened before. It'll happen again. It's not the end of the world. Um, I think that, you know, a huge part of people feeling like they know you, like you and trust you is you being genuine and authentic and being yourself. And, I, you know, I have had to call people back and say, Girl, I'm so sorry. I was, you know, I was driving when you called me earlier and I completely forgot to ask you for your email address and that, you know, I need that so that I can send you this invite and send you the packet I told you about. So um, <laughs> I apologize and they're going to laugh and they're going to be like, that's okay, you know, or I've had people, um, or maybe you, if, if you're not comfortable with that, like I'm, I own my mistakes. I, I I'm never going to be the kind of person that thinks that I need anybody to think that I'm perfect because I'm not. And, um, that stuff doesn't bother me. Some people that, that is like, will eat you alive. And, and, you know, you kind of obsess over every little misstep and, and miswording and, and, you know, anything you feel like you missed. Um, 
So if that, if you're not comfortable with saying, girl, I'm sorry, I, I messed up. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm, uh, my kid ran down the hall with a knife and I was halfway freaking out when we were on the phone, to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, whatever it is, if that's not you, so send a follow-up text. Thank you so much. And really you should do this anyway with whoever has called you. Once you get to a point after that conversation, um, that you've hung up, you want to send a text and say, Thanks so much for calling me, Marissa. Um, it was great to speak with you. I'm looking so forward to meeting you and your husband on Saturday. Um, would you please uh, text me your email address so that I can send those things over to you, um, you know, that we discussed on the phone? So, um, you know, you can always say, oh, you said you wanted to meet in person, and I'm so used to just autopilot, meaning that we're meeting at my office. Um that I didn't even think to confirm that was convenient for you. Is it okay to meet me at my office or did you have another location in mind? If you can always just kind of shoot a text over later and get a response like that, you don't have to say, um, ignore me, I'm crazy. But if you're going to hang out with me long enough, um, you're going to realize that that's how I am. Anyway, if you don't like it, you didn't want to work with me in the first place. So. Do you guys have any um, ahas or questions or um, want me to uh, go in any further with anything else that we talked about in these last couple slides? No, it just, it took me, this is like a, a an admittance thing for me that it took me forever to figure out, or at least it felt like it did. It took me a minute to figure out the ready, willing, and able. Um, yeah. So as soon as I figured that out, I, I quit wasting a lot of my time. So, yeah. Well, um, you know, Marissa, that was, that was, um, for me, that was the thing in the beginning, um, that was definitely my biggest struggle, struggle. You know, I wanted to jump on every thing that landed in front of me. Um, and I would just get so excited and I would work my tail off. And, uh, it took me a few times to realize that, that, uh, I had to slow my roll. Um, and you know, I, I didn't start with KW. Um, I did not start at a brokerage where I got all this awesome, uh, education and all these classes. And I didn't have, you know, all these agents that had experience that were willing to mentor me and, um, help me out. So I was kind of working blind and I made a, a lot of mistakes for, um, you know, in the beginning. And the, I think the most, and the ones that I made the longest was, not doing a good enough job qualifying clients. Um, there have ha had been several, several times I had actually one guy and he was a Zillow lead. Funny enough, Carla. Uh, so. Dude, just, every single one of mine falls into two <laughs> categories. Like I'm not joking. I have one client that may fall into all three <laughs> finally, but everybody has two of those and they're all like a different two of those. I'm not joking. <laughs> Well, um, you know, and if you, I, Jen and I still need to do our kind of intro meeting with you. And I feel like we've got a good handle on a few of the basic things that we ask everybody. So we can take it, maybe we can take a few minutes and you can kind of dig into what, what you mean by that with us. And we'll help you sort of, um, you know, handle them in a way that you don't lose them, but you don't waste your time if they're not there right now. And, and yeah. So try to help you get give you some advice on how to keep that business but not you know work it so hard that it's keeping you from from closing that right now business I um I, I had mean, clients like that too Kyla when I first started and I did I paid for some leads and things as well mm -hmm. and I remembered this one little couple they were very young um you know I was desperate to make a a sell they weren't qualified for very much. They, they were supposedly, and this is a whole nother story that I could go off on a tangent about, um, that I will come back to, but, um, I would show them houses. They weren't qualified for much. So it was really hard. They were always late. 
Um, they drove me insane. I mean, there were times that I would sit there and wait 30 or 45 minutes for them. I ain't doing that today. I'm yeah, not. Unless they call me and they're like, oh my God, you know, we have a flat tire. But it was every single time. And it and it was just like, they did not value my time. And it, it really used to piss me off. But I, I would just kind of grin and bear it. But, you know, they ended up just like completely disappearing on me and then one day I called to follow up and they had moved to freaking Atlanta and were living in an apartment wow I was so mad so what I want to go back to um, I think Christian mentioned you know establishing a relationship with good local vendors I got caught up with a um, lender and he's still in business um he had some questionable um, tactics mm. and ways um, that he did business. And unfortunately, I learned the hard way with him. But you, you need to pick your vendors very carefully. And I think somewhere deep inside of me, I knew that. But again, I, I was desperate to get that business. And... I wasted so much time, so much time mm -hmm. with those people and with him. And you, you're afraid to let it go because you think you won't get anything else. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not true. Yep. I should have just refocused and went in a different direction. I lost four deals because of that lender Ooh. Four. And, you know, um, if there's ever something where you know when you're newer and especially like I don't know if that was when you moved here you know maybe there was a question like for you that well this isn't the same in Florida but maybe it's different here you know if there's ever something that's like hmm that doesn't quite sound right but you are the professional in your field so I'll just take you know go follow along um if you ever run across something that doesn't sound or feel quite right um, just ask, you know, ask one of us, ask somebody in the office, um, and you know, we'll, we're happy to listen. And maybe it's just, maybe it isn't anything. Maybe you hear, oh no, you know, that's, that's totally normal. I know that's like a weird circumstance. You won't have it often, but it's not, you know, uh, impossible for it to be that way. Or maybe, you know, you're right and your gut is right. And you, you come to somebody and they're like, run, like send them to someone else. <laughs> and um, that's the feedback I got from other, um, seasoned realtors, if you will. Um, once I kind of did what Christian was saying and they were like, Oh no, st stay far away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So we all, you know, we, I think as far as, as far as Jen and I go, and I think probably most of the agents that are going to teach these Ignite classes, we probably learned this stuff the hard way. Um, and now, you know, all these classes and all these suggestions and stuff are in place because somebody somewhere along the way has already done what you're in the middle of doing. So you're not the only one. Um, and, you know, we're, we're always here to help you and we want to save you from, from making the same mistakes that we made. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So your touch plans, and these are things like we, we kind of talked about your ABC buyers and sellers, um, your A buyers or sellers, um, are your you know, you're right now, like out of desperation folks that you're not, you're not going to need to put them on a touch plan because they are calling you having an existential crisis every day. So you're, <laughs> you're, you don't need to worry about remembering them. They're there. Um, your B and C clients, you, you're going to want to make sure that you have them onto some kind of touch plan so that, um, so we don't lose them, right? Maybe they were referral, you know, like, 
uh, Marissa said her a past client of mine, you know, referred her to me. Maybe they did love me on that initial phone call. We got that initial converse consultation and we met in person. They thought I was great and I thought they were great. But then I got busy with my A clients and it's been a month since I talked to them in any way, shape or form. And, you know, everybody knows an agent, you know, somebody they work with, somebody, their coworkers, best friends, sister, brother, whatever. Um, if you don't stay in touch with these people, if you don't stay top of mind with them, someone else will come along. And before you know it, that listing appointment you went on that said, you know, oh gosh, girls, we just, we want to hire your team. We think you guys are the best. We've had so much fun with you today. Um, and you know, we, we think that we definitely want you to be the ones to sell our house, but, um, you know, uh, our, this or that is transpiring and we didn't expect it. And, um, you know, we're going to hold off and I think that we're going to wait until spring, um, to sell. So get back to us then. Well, if we take get back to us then the part, and that's six months from the day that we're having this appointment and that we wait six months to ever contact them in any way, shape, or form again, how mad can we be when we see that house on MLS listed with somebody else? Not that mad because we drop the ball. It's um, happened to me so many times. Yeah. So many times. Again, learn from my mistakes. Follow up. Oh, follow up. And, you know, don't let, we're, we all, we all mess up all the time. I mean, we're all going to, we're all gonna, you know, you're juggling a million and one things or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, don't let, don't let a mistake like crush you and just have you feel like, you know, you just gonna you you give up like oh well you know and beat yourself up over it learn from it you we will always want to fail forward so whatever it is that you didn't do right with that person just do better next time you know it's always a learning experience everybody's different and every deal is different and there's always something that we can improve on and even if you're really happy with the way that you have handled this whole transaction i'm sure there's still things that you're you've learned that next time you could do this even better um so we're, we're always we always want to be um constantly improving and evolving and um you know all that but these but here's two great um great touch plans that you guys can follow um and if you want to screenshot this, um, you know, you can do that if you haven't already. Uh, touches are like a form of communication. Um, there, there's some way that you've reached out to this, this um, contact that you have. Hey, Christian. Uh -huh. I, I meant to tell you the other day, but Wit was asking for this. Okay. So oh, this, this right here, yep. Okay. I don't know why, but he flagged me down in the office the other day, and I was like, uh, Christian goes over and ignite, and then you just did it, so. I will shoot that to him. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Sure. Wit is the man. Wit is our preferred vendor for, um, insurance he's with Allstate his team is awesome um I've sent several clients to him and he actually has my personal policy um he got me better coverage and I pay less money every month um so and he's he's a cool guy so you want to get to know what if you haven't already um, they have business insurance they do. Um, I have a commercial vehicle with them. So now we're going to talk about qualifying sellers because I think maybe that is like, that's probably something that took me, I think it took me longer to realize that sellers needed to be qualified than it did buyers. Like I picked up on real fast 
um, if you're not going to go get a prequal letter, then you're not, you know, you're not for real right now. So on to the next. But with sellers, it's kind of like, and, you know, you think, okay, like they want to sell their house and they called me to do it. And um, it's going to be great. And I'm just going to go get this listing. And you don't think that, I don't think that in the beginning you realize that there are things sellers need um, to do to be ready, willing, and able. And you're, you kind of can spin your wheels a lot with, with some crazies, man. I had this dude call me want me to sell his house because I had a listing down the street but all he really wanted me to do was come over and drink margaritas with him and I'm like I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna do that <laughs> um, that was wild but you never know like if somebody's calling you going I saw you had an open house down the road and I'd love you to come by on Friday and have a margarita with me and talk about my house that's not really a real appointment I I, I don't suggest you you do that um <laughs> Um, bring somebody with you be careful because yeah. they, they might be a creeper maybe they really do just want to give you a margarita while they show you their house but I'd, I'd be cautious yeah that was a Trevor sat in the driveway appointment um. <laughs> yep <laughs> for real um, I actually yeah he sat in my that's my husband I, my husband sat in my car um, at the end of the driveway and I, um, I had my phone on speaker inside my purse and he listened in on everything that was going on. This was before Jen and I were partners. So I was, I was just torturing my husband every time I was nervous and that's all I had. Now I get to torture Jen. <laughs> no, we have a good time. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, so we've got a pre-listing questionnaire, and you can do this in this format, or this can be like in your packet um, as well. That's that's. Uh, I think that um, these are these are great. Um, I think that you, I've gotten to a point probably where all these questions are like second nature. I don't know that I necessarily have them written out anywhere, but we probably should. I think it would be. I think it would be good um, to have. So, yeah. Um, you're going to want to know, like, all, all these things. What, how did you hear about me? Um, because if it is a referral, you always, always, always want to thank whoever sent you business. And then why are they moving? Um, what's motivating them to move there? You know, if they, you would be surprised. I've literally had someone, you know, want to come, want me to come talk about selling their house. Um, and their motivation for moving was that they were thinking about moving to South Africa if the election didn't go the way that they wanted it to go. Um, but they didn't know how they were going to go to South Africa and they didn't know how they would get jobs in South. And it was, all, it was like insanity. Um, if, you, if you don't ask these kind of questions, you're not going to realize they're completely nuts. Um, <laughs> uh, that house has never been listed. I don't know that they would talk about, I think they're crazy. Um, but you know, you, you, you need to ask sellers a lot of questions too and kind of see if it's really worth your time or if they're, Cray cray. Um, and then again, back to like, what if they tell you that, you know, they have a 768 square foot home um, in the middle of the city on a point one two acre lot and they want half a million dollars for it and they're not going to take any less than that ever. Well, that's... A, never going to happen and you're going to waste your time. This is a good time to tell about the Harry Potter house. Oh Lord. Yeah. Oh y'all. So. And it's on MLS. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this past year, um, Jen and I, how did we get, oh, oh, okay. So. Oh, because I'm calling it fires. 
like a good girl. Yes. But. Calling expires is a great way to get listing appointments. Um, when I first started, sometimes. I got up. <laughs> at, yeah. Sometimes when I first started, I would get up at 5 a.m. every single morning and I would go through the whole expired list. I would dig all their information. I would write it all out. I'd take my kids to school, drop them off, come back. And I would call every single expired and set appointments with them. Um, and then we went through a while where there weren't any expireds because if you had a freaking dog house for sale, they'd buy it for $150,000, but, um, we're starting to see expireds again. So Ow. yeah, Jen and I were like, Oh, you know, we're expireds are popping up again. We're going to let's start calling expireds and we'll get some listing appointments and we got us one. <laughs> yeah, we um, did. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The photos were oh. really bad, really, really, really bad. So Jen and I are looking through these photos. This is a million dollar expired listing. Um, we're excited because that price point it, it often sits. You know, not everybody is is able to spend a million dollars, so it's not uncommon for a million dollar home to expire. Um, or when you get over a million, and unless the bigger price point, um. It was out in Floyd, and the pictures were horrible, horrible. So we're thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, this is going to be awesome, and it just really needs professional photos. It looks like a really cool, like, different kind of place. It had a lot of acreage. Um, it is not uncommon for a million-dollar piece of property to be sold in Floyd at all. So we're, like, real excited. <laughs> oh, boy. Mm. Um, these folks do not live here. Um, they own this property. They have a contractor box at the property and they tell us that they, we are free to go by there any time that we'd like to, um, that weekend. And, you know, that there's a box on the porch and, um, you know, whatever they live in like Texas or something. <laughs> we go out there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before in all my years. Never. As we go down the winding gravel path, there in are the middle the, of the woods. Yes, in the absolute middle of the woods, zero service, like SOS on your phone. You know, if we get murdered, it's going to take a while to be found. <laughs> Months, probably. <laughs> um, and we're going down this creepy little winding gravel driveway. And to oh. add to the sketch, they uh, they had carved humans attached <laughs> to trees like they were bound to the trees as if they're like, I don't know what. So We have some photos Christian can share in the group text later. <laughs> um, we pull up to this baby Still. and it is... We have quickly discovered why there were no good photos because it was probably the only chance you were going to get somebody to go up there. <laughs> yeah. It felt yeah. like they couldn't Real. tell anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like something out of like a Hobbit home. It was like a Harry Hobbit Potter. Slash <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah, like it could be a pretty sweet airbnb for somebody that was like interested in a, a harry potter experience if they sunk about a hundred thousand dollars into it to make it safe <laughs> i don't know it's crazy um they so built it's it on the mls yes oh yes they built it themselves by hand neither of them are contractors um <laughs> of any kind so that alone should give you a pretty good idea <laughs> um it was wild um i i will never forget it and i i have nothing to compare it to other than a harry potter hobbit house i i don't that they wanted a million dollars for um and it was something Nova, it was yes yes it, it was, was an experience <laughs> that it was yes. mm -hmm. Um, they like had cemented rocks together to build a lot of the walls 
And because they were doing this on their own while they were tripping in the woods with their hippie friends or something, um, they <laughs> had, there was all this water damage. Yeah, man. It was like <laughs> just open to the weather for I don't know how long. It was crazy. There was wires hanging everywhere. Oh. Uh, like scrap pieces of wood nailed together. Literally, uh, like, oh, the corner doesn't meet, so let's just take this chunk of quarter round and glue it here. And <laughs> <laughs> the outlet yeah, looked like they had been pulled out of like a 1920s house and reused. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the heck, dude? It was yeah. It was wild. It was wild for sure. I, I was almost speechless. Like I, I, I didn't exactly know what to say. I'm like, I, I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> Please post those pictures. I need to see this. Well, I and I don't want to pick on the other agent. I mean, but uh, yeah, it has not moved. Nope. I, I bet not. I bet not. But you know, she's a big agent, and she's a big yes. agent. Um, she is. She is. And she's getting she's getting you know exposure which was what jen and i discussed like if we took it it would have to be for the exposure it would be like because we could market it in a way that you couldn't market anything else and and you know she's a she's a great great agent and she's got you know some expendable funds to kind of put herself up on a billboard or in a magazine or whatever to get that notoriety which if that's the you know, if that's the way you're looking at it and you've got the money to spend, why not? Um, we just really weren't in a position to, to drop that kind of money on. For um, no reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for no good reason. Yes. No good reason for me. Yep. Um, on advertising alone. And then the more we discussed it to you, like it would take a very specific clientele to even have interest to call you. And we weren't sure that that was you know, we were wanting to go the tree licking route. I just, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe <Sure. laughs> a long, long time ago, those were my people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So you'll, you'll have things too, but you know, it's one of those things like we were just talking about. Don't waste your time. Cut your losses. Yep. Yep. And there's, there's, there's definitely that is there's so much truth behind that don't ever feel like if you don't do this you're not going to get anything else it's not that is not true if you take the effort you're putting into something that will never produce fruit and you put it into action that will it will it will be well worth it to drop you know just to let it go sometimes you gotta let it go um I feel like we already kind of role played a, a seller phone call. Um, is there anything uh, that you guys would like to take this these few minutes um, to role play like differently or like questions or scenarios? Or do you have like how would you handle X Y Z or you know what if a person calls and says this or I don't know? Um, is there anything any like real life scenario um, that you guys want to use this time for? Well, Christian, I do have a, a question and this, it, I mean, it's, it's gone now, but um, when I did put in that offer on Walnut and the guy called the other agent and he was so polite, so nice. And he, you know, he was very, oh, the, the offer was great, but you know, you, you really just can't be the cash offer when they, when they offered this much more above asking price and so mm -hmm. on and so on. Is there anything that I could have said after before he hung up to um to keep us to you know to keep me in mind or or can I do that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So um you know, cash is kind of king. Mm -hmm. Um, unless they're the type of cash buyers who think that that means they can come in at a hundred thousand dollars less because they have cash. Um, cash ain't one of those. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's, gonna it's, it's been it's been an adventure <laughs> yeah 
if they're a very realistic cash buyer and they're offering that client at asking or very close to it with little content to contingencies, you, you really can't compete with that. No. Um, but yeah, no, Marissa, there is not, and, and this is anytime, anytime, anytime ever, um, whether it's cash or whether it's, you know, they needed a little less seller concessions or they're, they're doing no inspections or, you know, whatever it is that they say to you is they, they, it was real close, but you know, it didn't work, whatever. There is nothing wrong with saying, well, thank you so much for letting me know. And, um, if for whatever reason this deal falls through and it doesn't work out, would you please keep me in mind and reach back out to me? Because, you know, there's perhaps we will not have found something different um, if, if this falls apart. And we, my client really loved it. So if it doesn't work out, we'd love to be, um, we'd love a second chance or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, you can totally say that. Okay. And so if, if that were to happen, I'm just saying, let's say that deal fell through and he called, he's like, Hey, Marissa, I don't know if you remember me, blah, blah, blah. We would really love to uh, consider that offer. Mm -hmm. But when I made the offer, it had an end date on it. Mm -hmm. So would I just write a new contract? I mean, a new offer? Um. I think first thing first, you have to respond in a way that's like, well, I thank you so much, you know, for reaching back out to us. Um, I appreciate you remembering us. Let me call my client and make sure that they're still willing to uh, honor those same terms um, and, you know, what they, how they're feeling. So, because sometimes, um, you know, may, maybe it's been a month you know deals fall apart days before closing sometimes um sometimes closings get pushed out for one reason or another and then it still doesn't work so maybe it's been a couple of months and maybe the market has changed you know maybe that house is not uh, maybe it's not really worth what it was a couple months ago maybe the comps aren't there now maybe some things around it have closed for less and you can get your buyer a better deal on the house um, you know, and then not for nothing, they've wasted some time, they've paid another mortgage payment, and they're coming up on another one that they're going to have to pay. So it's always kind of good to, to take a minute and sort of strategize and, and your client has to, you know, ultimately, it's they have to give the answer um, with what they want to do. And maybe they're, you know, maybe they want to make some changes, maybe they want to go, um, all in with whatever it is that they wrote the the last time. Um, so so you want to talk with them and then, uh, yeah, I I mean I'd say yes. Um, you should be able to just go into that previous contract and change the date, and have your your client re-sign everything. Um, but I think that would be best practice to go ahead and, and change the dates and make sure everything is, is correct. Um, with that, Jen, do you agree with that? Yeah, no, that makes, that makes perfect yes. sense. I just wasn't sure if I had to like do it all over again or, or, or what? No, um, you should be able to open that. It should say, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can just update the, the time or the, uh, the dates and stuff. Okay. Sounds good. Do you guys have any um feedback? Sorry, my mouth full. Um, again, communicate with your database, put them on a touch plan. Um, you know, your feedback only helps us improve. If you'd like to scan this code and, um, leave your comments, questions, considerations, rate us. Go ahead. Um, 
KW Cares is a nonprofit through KW. The money goes towards Keller Williams agent or their family that's um or not just an agent like hey, honey, that's not a monkey bar. Can you get her off that swing, please? I need to see it. Um um so this is money that you know if if a if somebody within our kw family or their family member is suffering some sort of hardship um the money can be donated to them this year we we spent um the fund on dawn dawn <laughs> an agent in our office uh was diagnosed with cancer and had to go through treatment and uh, we were able to use some of this fund to help her so it's a great thing if that's um something that you'd like to do KW Next Gen used to be KW Kids Can. Um, maybe you've heard of it that way. It's another nonprofit you can donate to. Um, it helps, uh, you know, young people get into the real estate world. Um, it's how we provide um, scholarships for K score and puts kids through Quantum Leap, um, all that jazz. Your lead follow-up plan should be to follow up. Uh, I always suggest you make a phone call. A lot of times you don't get an answer, but you can leave voicemail and then I follow up with a text message. Um, hey, sorry I missed you. You know, I met you at this event, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. Um, convert, stay top of mind, qualify buyers and sellers. So that convert means like a lead is just information that you have. You haven't talked to them. You haven't built a relationship with them. You haven't, you know, been in contact with them in any way. Um, once you start to form a relationship, you're having two-way communication. They go from being a lead to being a contact, being part of your database. You've converted them to potential business. Um, in order to turn them into actual business, you need to stay top of mind. So continue to follow up. Send them emails, invite them to things, <clears throat> reach out to them quarterly um, at least. And then, you know, at the point that they say we're ready to get into some sort of uh, real estate, we want to buy, sell, or invest, then you're going to qualify them and get the deal closed. Um, your ahas to achievement when you sit through these things it's a great idea to think of like um if you have new ideas or what mindsets are new has your thinking changed how do you, what do you feel differently about what was meaningful to you today um what are things that you're going to do differently moving forward um and then consider the tools models or systems that you'll use on the um moving forward to be you know successful um, and reach the goals that you have set for yourself um, and you want to think about how you're going to hold yourself accountable for the, to those actions. Your daily success system is going to be that you want to have 10 conversations, add 10 contacts, do 10 handwritten notes, um, follow the 10-5-1 social media engagement rule, and then, you know, to have daily enrichment. So, 10 conversations is easy. You can have 10 conversations a day, you know, no problem. Um, adding 10 contacts a day is a little bit more difficult. It's not that you can't do it, um, but, you know, if you can't get to 10 and you only get one, one is better than none. So, you know, do the do do the best you can to be adding more contacts to your database every, every day. Um, you know, spend some time each day sending out some handwritten notes, whether that be thank you cards or birthday cards or anniversary cards or, you know, invitations to something that you're, you're some kind of event you're about to have or, um, you know. And if you're using your command the way that you should be, if you look at your command every morning, it will tell you if you've got the right information, um, whose birthday it is coming up or today and their home anniversary, it tracks all of that for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 10, five, one social media engagement is 10 likes a day. So react to 10 posts every day. 
Um, that's easy. Um, we can all do that. Um, make five comments each day. So, you know, oh, that pup, your, your brand new puppy is so adorable. Congratulations on your new job. You know, whatever. Um, interact with people. Five, five comments a day. We can all find a way to do that. Um, and then, you know, if you're not a social media person, if you don't have many friends on social media yet, if this is something that you're, you're new to and you've, you've set up social media and you're, you're doing this for your business and it's not your thing and you're learning and you're, you're trying to add, um, you know, folks on there to engage with, um, join some real estate groups, you know, join some, um, Join some referral groups, engage with other agents and focus on building your referral business. If you have a hard time with thinking about who can you add personally to engage with on social media. Um, so until you kind of build up that friend list, you can, you can engage with other agents and other groups and, um, you know, make friends within our business. Um, and then one is either make one post a day or send one private message a day. So that's easy enough. It doesn't always have to be a business post. Um, you know, you you want to be posting personal things too. So, you know, whether that's um, just a funny little cartoon that you liked or a video of an animal that was really cute or whatever, um, either make a post every day or um, privately message someone every day to try to spark, you know, some conversation with someone. Um and then enrichments are, you know, learning, like listen to a podcast, read a book. Today, you came to Ignite. That was your enrichment for the day. Good job. Check that off the list. Don't call people that don't want to be called. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution, and people are happy to be in relationship with me. So if you have this limiting mindset that people don't want to talk to you, and you don't want to make these phone calls, and you don't want to reach out to these people because they're not going to like you, and it's all, like, just going to be you know, this horrible experience and everybody's going to be upset that you called, then you're not going to call. So that's not the truth at all. I mean, you might run into a couple grumpy people, but for the most part, that's not going to be how it goes. Um, tell yourself positive things like this, you know, um, make those calls, have those interactions, and then you'll realize that people are happy to be in relationship with you and they want to hear from you. We've role played all we're role playing on this Zoom, y'all. If you, if you have some real life questions, call me, text me, email me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, prepare your conversation list. So when you're making these calls, um, take a, a few notes on what the purpose of your conversation is, right? Like, um, command is a base a great place to have these notes because. You want to get in the habit of having your notes virtual somewhere so that you can find them again. Um, I am the queen of 5 million sticky notes and 13 notebooks and, you know, chicken scratch on stuff. Like, I, I'm bad for that. Or I've, I've gotten a lot better. Um, again, I didn't start at KW. We did not have a CRM at the brokerage that I started at. I didn't have technology like that. And it was... Um, it was something that I had to retrain myself to do and work smarter and not harder. So, um, you know, utilize technology, open that command note section of that contact and kind of jot down a few things, a few talking points. Um, you know, if you're like I was this morning with the role play, you might want to make note to ask for that email address and let them know where you're going to meet them at if they want to meet in person um, so that you don't forget to say that. <laughs> So, um, I encourage you guys to make some calls today, do some lead generation today. Um, if you haven't already called everyone that is in your sphere to tell them that you're licensed now, um, and that you're selling real estate and you want to help them or anyone that they know when they get to a point where they're ready to buy, sell, or invest, work on that. Um, so if you have already done that and you need 
uh, the next step, then um, I would work on a game plan of getting, you know, getting some more leads. Are you going to host an open house? Are you going to, um, you know, go to this uh, vendor, um, sorry, vendor fair that Kyla was talking about? And if, if you're struggling with client to client conversations and like finding a client to call and lead Jen with, um, call vendors, build relationships with title companies, insurance agents, lenders, um, plumbers, electricians, painters, you know, construction, like build relation, call, um, other business owners that fit our world, right? Add them to your, to your, um, to your packet, your list of people, um, that you work with. Uh, we all need to have um, a minimum of three vendors that we're suggesting to clients to keep you out of the hot seat. So, you know, if you have, um, you have one electrician and, you know, that's your buddy and you like him, it's great to suggest him, but you want to build a relationship with two more that you feel like Maybe you're not going to use them personally. You're only going to use your buddy, but we don't ever want to be only suggesting one vendor to clients because not everybody likes each other. You know, not everybody's ever, not everybody meshes um, and works well together and you don't want them to blame you for, for being. Don't get person. sued. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, I need to wear a t-shirt that says that because I feel like that's all I ever tell you guys is don't get yourself sued, but I'm, I'm serious. It, yeah. it can happen very easily. It really can. So, um, yeah, if you don't have leads to call and have conversations with, um, call some, call some vendors, you know, build those relationships. They're happy to get those calls. They're looking for business just like we are. Um, if you have not already added all your contacts to command, do that and update them. If you have their home address, put it into their contact. If you have, their email address and it's not in their contact card, add it. Make sure your database is um, healthy. That's what they call it, the health of your database. So make some calls um, and celebrate your su successes. If you know the first couple calls don't work out the way that you wanted them to, then you know get get back on the horse and uh, keep going because. If you make enough, one of them will. It's it's just the rule of what is that thing, Jen? Um, Statistically, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you're you're gonna have more no's than yeses, but you know what? All it takes is that one yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um, all right. Well, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much. Um, for being on here today. I apologize that it took me so long to get it going. Um, but we had a weird, I couldn't even make Facebook work last night. So we got going. At least, at least it happened eventually. <laughs> um, so thank you guys. And if you have any um, questions from this or just at all, reach out to me or Jen. We're happy to help you. Um, go uh, go do some, some lead, Jen, and let us know how it goes. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.